Welcome back to our Halo recap interview show where we talk full spoilers for weekly episodes of Halo. I'm your host, Brandon Davis. Welcome to the comicbook.com Halo recap for episode four. And you know, we have a special guest each week when we do this. And right now, I am very, very, very excited to have a Spartan joining me. This is super exciting. Kai125, Kate Kennedy. Kate, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming. You're a, you're a legend yourself, and uh, I'm so happy to talk with you about this. I got a Spartan now. This is the first time we have a Spartan on the show, so this is awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. You actually, you. I want to start because you have done so much really cool video game voice work, and you've done live mm. action work before, but this is your first time doing a live action role, I think, that is based on a video game. What yes. is that leap like for you? It's really surreal, actually, because I, I, yeah, I do a lot of voices for games, but you never get to wear the costume. <laughs> it's, um, and you're obviously behind, um, oh gosh, sorry, I just lost you. Um, and I've lost, yeah, and um, it's, really, it's really awesome. Also, it's nice to stick to one character. A lot of video games I do, you end up doing a whole ensemble of different voices. So it's really nice to get stuck into one particular character. I bet, I bet it is pretty nice to be able to get into rhythm. And I would love to know, like, are you much of a gamer yourself? Do you ever sit down and play the games that you're the voice in? Or is that, would that just be like a kind of weird experience? Um, I've got a lot of friends that are gamers and they do contact me when I pop up in their games. Um, but I do, I would find it weird playing me <laughs> in, a, in a game. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't watch my own interviews, and I'm uh, like, I, you know, I can't listen to myself talk. I can't imagine if you're out there performing and doing all that stuff. It must be so strange. But uh, yeah, w- w- talk to me about becoming a Spartan. Like, what was the process like? I mean, you got they, they cast some talented people, some tall people. Like I saw y'all at the premiere. Everybody has one thing in common. Everybody is tall. Y'all are really Spartans in real life. Uh, talk yeah. about the process of becoming a spar, what the audition was like, how it, how it came about. The audition, well, there are quite a few auditions, but um, it was, I think they were yeah, definitely looking for tall, tall actors. Um, I remember the waiting room being, being full of an entire like netball team, basketball team. <laughs> but, um, but once you got the role, uh, we were put on a, a big training program. So we had boot camps and... Um, quite a rigorous training um, system that we started pretty early. So back in August uh, 2019, I think. And then we started filming a good three, four months later. Um, And the training continued. So whether we were filming or not, we were training every day um, for hours. And then depending on the type of scene that we were building up to, like uh, specific action scenes for, for, for my character or um other uh, other scenes that required certain uh, physicality we would differ the training um do some cross training different types of training to be able to pull it off <laughs> in the suits yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It shows because you guys are like that first episode had just brilliant action and so and, and I, I mean I, I imagine you also had to learn how to move in a, in like the spartan gear what was it like to put on the the, the mule near armor for the first time yeah, the first time there was a big... Well, we had a couple of fittings beforehand in London and the guys at F- FX at BX did an amazing, amazing job and the whole of the costume department are incredible to create these these costumes. They're amazing. Um, but the first time we were all together, the four of us, was in Budapest where we were filming in the costume house and um, and we came out to the entire costume department as a, as a foursome and it was really... It was so cool. It was it was oh, awesome. Yeah. It was really okay. powerful. Yeah, but we were so unused to the suits at that stage because it was uh, such early doors that we all had to sit down after about seven minutes. <laughs> it was, <laughs> they were really hardcore. That's awesome. If you guys happen to have one that's for somebody who's like six three to ten, I would love to. Uh, you know, like I'm in Nashville, I'll give you my address. Uh, up, to, <laughs> up to this point. Uh, Kai has been under the control of the pellet. In episode four, mm. she takes it out, which means she's probably acting on her own volition, unless Halsey's up to something. Well, I don't know. But uh, I would love to hear from you. What, uh, what, how does that change things for you from your perspective and from Kai's perspective? 
I think it's such a gift of a of a role and a storyline because it's it's so fascinating to go from essentially a machine that feels no emotion or any kind of hormonal interference to suddenly becoming human and what that is and how confusing that is and how that feels specifically after you've been um, taken hostage essentially and stolen at the age of six, who you are once you're able to feel again. Um, And I think for Kai, it's kind of wondrous. I think she, uh, at first, especially in episode four, is really enjoying it, enjoying these brand new feelings, but not knowing what they are, because it probably doesn't have the words for them. Um, but yeah, it is a really exciting journey for Kai, and it's about to get more exciting. I did think it was fun how one of the first things she did was she decided to change her hair. <laughs> her hair. I was like, that's <laughs> In the words of Fleabag, hair is, yeah, very important. <laughs> what, what, what is that? What do you think that means? Or what can you tease about uh, the fact that Kai is one of the Spartans who is acting on her own while the other Spartans are still acting according to their pellet? Does that change the trust dynamic? Does that mean Kai can kind of maybe take advantage of a few things? Or what does that do? Yeah, it throws up a lot of questions as to whether she will tell the other Spartans, whether she wants them to join her, or whether she she wants to keep it secret for a while, whether she understands what's happening, um, how that affects her when it comes to battle. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much I can Fit, no, say. That's good, that's good. Play yeah. <laughs> you never know. If you're saying too much, that was good. I'll, never know. I'll, I'll take what I got and I'll appreciate it. A bit like Kai. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> You, you, on this show, you guys are all on awesome sets and you're like holding these props straight out of the games. You are near, uh, like, I think you had a scene with a corpse of an elite guard in yeah. episode four and you held yeah. a needler. So first of all, yeah. I want to hear what, what's been your favorite prop, but also is, does, is there any like functionality to any of those props? Like is the needler actually going to have like, like the needles popping out and stuff that we've seen from the games at all? Well, 100% that's my favorite prop. Um, so cool messing around with a needler. <laughs> I love it. Um, I mean, they look they look incredible uh, and actually have a bit of serious like, weight to them as well. Um, but no, I, 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 it's not functional. That particular one isn't functional yet, but the props guys, they can bloody do anything. So who knows what, what's coming up next. That's fair. So if I go to war, I'm not going to take the prop needler because it's... I'll just have to hit somebody with it. But. I'll end you a real a real Z. Yeah. <laughs> was, was there really like a, did they fully build out like the dead uh, Covenant guard that was on the table? Is that real? Are you like really looking at that the whole time? It is so real. I, I need to get Olive uh, to send me the photographs because it, it's frighteningly real. It's amazing. Oh, you also seem to have gotten pretty familiar with the Sangheili language yourself or you were forced to for this episode. Was that one of the biggest challenges you faced so far? Like, did you learn quite a few new uh, words in that tongue? Yeah, we did. We did. We did learn a few. I mean, not as much as Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy, the linguistic queen, she sounds amazing and she learned that all from scratch. And it, it sounds so natural coming out. She's, she's an incredible, incredible linguist. That's amazing. It is super cool to see how you all have had to like, take on the challenge of learning that. And I think fans like myself and everybody else watching definitely uh, appreciate that. Did you know that you were the first person to say the word halo on the show? Episode four, you were the first person to call the ring halo. Yeah, you- when I saw the trailer, I, I blew my tiny mind. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. For the first three episodes, we're like, they keep calling it the ring. They keep calling it the ring. Call it Halo. And then you did it. Thank you. And then I did it. Yeah. So so with all the, I'm going to wrap this up by asking about what may be coming because we've seen a lot of storylines being set up in different places with different characters. I can only imagine they're all going to converge. There's going to be crazy action sequences. Like, when is this stuff all going to pop off? When is it all going to have a big explosive crossover? What can we expect down the road? I think sooner rather than later, I think you're you're in for a treat with episode five. That's all I'll say. It's, Do you have um, an episode you're most looking forward to out of all that are left? I I really like six. I think that's that's a really goodie. They're all really good, and I really want to see seven. I haven't seen seven. Um, 
and yeah, super exciting. You, I feel like you could call somebody and say, hey, uh, let me see seven, please. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> don't you know? I'll do that right now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Come over there. <laughs> I'll get my needler. Yeah, yeah, I got a needler. Well, okay. Honestly, thank you so much. Big fan of your work, and it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you. And congratulations on being a part of the show. I can't wait to see where it goes. I'm really enjoying it so far. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you haven't watched last week's episode, we had Cortana herself, Jen Taylor, on the show. So go find that on the comicbook.com YouTube channel. And tune in next week to hear more about Halo Episode 5. See you later.